Good evening, everyone. I am your play-by-play -play caster, Redacted, joined tonight with my color caster, Sultan, and we are here for week nine of the Classic Championship Series. We have Horizon Gaming versus Predictive Gaming Odin, and it is going to be one contentious series, don't you think, Sultan? Yeah, exactly. Um, we, we're seeing uh, kind of a race for the second seed right now between the two mm -hmm. teams. So just having this matchup, in week nine, last week of the regular season is going to be really hype. Definitely hype indeed. And, you know, just to give our viewers some perspective and information on both of these teams, we actually have a wonderful graphic that I wanted to pull up just so we can know what we're getting into. You know, we got some stats now, so let's just get into it real quick. Why don't you, why don't you say, Sultan? So here we have, you know, we see the team KDEA. These are average team stats for both teams, by the way. So, you know, Horizon Gaming, the average KD is a little bit lower than, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. we kind of expect them some plat leagues. But, you know, that's just a team thing. Now, obviously, lane by lane is de definitely different. But we can move into the other things. So, like, game time, deaths per game. So let's just go into it. So what do you have to say about some of these team stats? Um, I think... Like overall, when we look, it shows that PGO kind of, it's like they took longer to finish the games, but mm -hmm. this can also be interpreted as it, like, even if you're in the lead, it might take a long time for you to kind of push your lead into them. So that's mm -hmm. one thing to look at. Uh, the, like that skills per game, it doesn't really matter that much at the end of the day, because I'm pretty sure Horizon had a much higher KD coming into the last few weeks. They had like a rough, a rough series back to back. I think not back to back. But one of them was against Iconic. One of them against uh, Sensei Squad. Yeah. So that always affects it. Game record is actually pretty close. We see PGO having like two more losses than mm -hmm. in the games that they actually won, and Horizon being able to kind of like pull ahead in the winning series record too, which means that. So since they have the same game record, uh, mm -hmm. it's just going to be whoever wins this will kind of just like take the second spot. Um, I think, if I'm not wrong, if PGO wins 2-1, they might still... Yeah, PGO has to win 2-0 to mm -hmm. get a third seed. Okay, wait. Okay, I'm, I think I'm just having a problem here. Okay, <laughs> so if PGO wins, they get okay. the third seed. Okay. But if they lose, they get fourth seed, so they're, they're looking to get to third seed. And Horizon, if they win, they go to second seed because they have a better record in general than Shadows when it comes mm -hmm. to game record. But mm -hmm. if they lose, Predictive goes to third, and then they go to fourth. So... Uh, uh, super, uh, Huff Zone in chat is saying that uh, they're actually going to get second seed if they 2-0. They do. Apparently. Uh, you know, I'm not the mathematician. We'll leave that up to the experts here uh, in the CCS, but, I'm, you know. I'm pretty sure they can't just because Shadow's got a 2-0 FF win this week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even if Predictive wins 2-0 today. Well, oh, wait, they I, have the head-to-head. -head. They have the head-to-head. Oh, okay. head. They have the head-to-head. Never mind. Yeah. Yep. They have the head-to-head. -head. Okay, my bad. I, I think... I thought the game series would be higher, like prior, but mm -hmm. if it's head to head, yeah, if predictive wins, they're gonna get the second seed. Then, so this means that we're gonna have a kind of a game to decide who's who's going to be the second seed. Yeah, definitely, it will be a game indeed, because seeding is very important. I mean, as we know, seeding, uh, the top two seeds, I believe, do get a buy with the first seed getting to choose who they want to play against but that's pretty much locked in by goldfish gaming there so i know horizon have been a little bit shaky so i know they really want to try and secure this second seed for themselves and of course pgo right there right behind them and they would love to have a buy as well to be able to scout out their competition and you know just get a week of rest and scrims and whatnot and find out like who's going to be their opponent versus playing um, you know, in the first round and then the next round, so on and so forth. It just gives you a better life raft throughout the gauntlet that is the playoffs here. But, um, and, you know, just 
thinking of all this, it's going to be very exciting as we are prepping for draft here. Horizon is on the blue side with PGO being on red. Uh, Sultan, any thoughts on uh, draft, you know, now that we're on 12.6 here? Um, yeah, so there were obvious nerfs. I think one of the biggest one, at least would mm -hmm. probably affect the meta, meta was the Hecarim nerfs. I still think Hecarim in general as a champion is super strong. So, mm -hmm. um, like it shouldn't take away a lot. If your team is really good playing with it, mm -hmm. you can still probably just like take over games with it. It's pretty easy. They, they took down some damage, but in my opinion, Hecarim's strength is just kind of the snowball that you can have the like the movement speed just makes it so hard for the enemy team to actually have a counter pick against you unless mm -hmm. they have like in my opinion champs like Tr trundle kind of works really good into him because make like when hecarim tries to go in it makes him makes him really squishy so that was like one of the nerfs i think trindemir also received one which mm -hmm. i think half zone sometimes likes to pull out so maybe that might be something to look at maybe he well Trindemir's Trindemir. We all know. He just kinda coin flips the crits early on. If you're yeah. lucky, you just win the lane. If you're not, it's like a oh yeah, it's just an FF. <laughs> because like that that champion is really snowbally. Mm -hmm. But in the end, I think with how the meta looks, it should be kind of similar to what was kind of being played before. I, I don't mm -hmm. think there will be a lot of changes. Especially since these teams have been playing kind of the same style. I think they would they would give more priority to their comfort rather than playing something that is meta but that they haven't really had to practice on. Yeah, definitely indeed. Definitely indeed. And we will have to find out here as we are ready for draft and we are you know, draft is active now, and we already have a couple of bans coming out super fast, actually. Horizon banning the Camille and Thresh already, and PGO responding with the Viego Karma. These drafts are coming in. Warwick as a third ban for Horizon Gaming, though. So maybe they know something we don't, as we see the Lucian ban for PGO for on their uh, B R R3 um, on the red side there. And first pick Ari for Horizon. Oh my goodness, yeah. this draft is just lightning quick. We didn't yeah. even get time to really talk about all these bands and whatnot. Yeah. And now we see Galio locked in for PGO here on R1. And they're rounding cool. out the second pick here. The Ash. Okay. The Ash. Interesting. Sultan, what you got to say about that so far? What, what does that okay. tell you so far with the Galio Ash? Well... I think in general draft, they both teams have an idea. They they mm -hmm. they like. I think they're not really going for the counter picks. Rather, mm -hmm. they're just like picking their conference that they've been playing because like this is like the picks are just going in like in the first five six seconds, right? Yeah. Uh, but if you need, I I want to talk about the bands first. Karma is a really dominant support right now, mm -hmm. probably one of the best enchanters in the game, and I know Bravo plays it. On the other side of the bands, Camille has been what. Like, what's been the game-winning champion for the side of PGO? Like, especially Half Zone on the Camille is super good. Mm -hmm. Super comfortable. Warwick is a pick that Charizard plays. And it's a kind of a champion that sometimes the junglers are, don't really have much experience playing into because it's not that popular in solo queue. Mm -hmm. And then we see Ari, Zaya, and Volberg being picked by Horizon. Ari is probably one of the higher picks in the... Like one of the highest tier champions in the mid lane right now, Kaiser yeah. is a really skilled Ari player, as far as I remember. And also, the Zaya, it's a safe option. You can dodge the Asher pretty easily with the Feather mm -hmm. Storm that she has. Also, the Wally Bear is like probably the best jungler in the game right now. The answer mm -hmm. to Wally Bear is the Nocturne and Zillion. That's like <laughs> super, just like very pressing ultimates globally yeah. and coming for you. These teams are definitely ready to play as they are not sparing us casters any time to get any, you know, intellect in, any dialogue, any analysis as we we sped through bands and now we're speeding through picks here as we see the Alstar locked in her Horizon. And I wanted to go back and I thought Horizon did a very well done job by banning the Vex there. As we've seen recently, the Vex um, Nocturne combo is pretty dastardly and dangerous i mean you could have put that gallo into support vex go mid 
and then you just have the Nocturne going with the Galio ulting him, then the Vex to come. Oh my God, it'd just be a freaking massacre. So that's a yeah. pretty good ban from Horizon there. As we see the Aatrox um, being blinded for Horizon on the top lane. So Archon piloting that Denzin there. And we'll see how um, Huff Zone will respond here. Oh, super, to super top, definitely choosing the Trindamir there. So. Well done from the yeah. PGO top laner. Yeah. Uh, Trinum is a good pick into Aatrox. It is, uh, it can be rough. Uh, it's a kind of a skill matchup. It depends if you know the matchup. Uh, it depends on your matchup knowledge. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I think both top laners have decent experience with these top laners. So it will be an interesting lane to look up to. It will probably mm -hmm. come down to which jungler kind of like gets, gets to the top lane and like kind of get gifts the kill to their top laner and the lead at the same time. Um, Alistar also being picked up. It is, I think Alistar is a really good pickup, thinking that they're going to need some peel because uh, like Zaya ultimate alone will not be enough to peel off a Galio, Ash, Nocturne, a Trindamir running from the side lane, from the flank. And then like, even if you get a kill, there's yeah. still the Zillion ult, there's the Trindamir ultimates. It's going to be really hard to get a kill. The yeah, thing yeah. is... Oh, go ahead. Oh, Sorry. My bad. I think no, 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 go ahead. Yeah, okay. go ahead and finish. My problem is that if PGO is like PGO side have uh, has a way to play this game because mm -hmm. like even if they're behind, they can always go for the side lane picks with the Nocturne and Galio. We, they can look for the um, Enchanted Crystal Arrows from the Ash. So like they always have that potential to like pick someone, get a shutdown, kind of keep the game rolling. Mm -hmm. But for the side of Horizon, their champions, if they are behind, it is really hard to play these champions. If they're ahead, it's fine because like their snowball champions, Ari, Aatrox, they kind of like push their lead into the opponents, mm -hmm. and like they don't. It's hard to punish them even with PGO's comp if the side of Horizon is ahead. But yeah, the, the, the early game will probably matter a lot in this game, especially after the yep. like level six start to come in. Yep, no, I definitely agree with you for on that uh statement there because yeah, like you said, I um so I typically I um for those who have caught my cast, I won't say that I don't like the Ash pick. It's that every time I've seen Ash pick, she loses because most of the teams um you know, I feel like because she has been kind of out of the meta for so long and um she hasn't been played as much a lot of teams don't really know how to utilize her effectively or to her greatest potential. Um, but I think as time has progressed, teams are starting to realize how to play around this pick once again. Um, so yeah, for sure. Like we'll see if PGO can break that ass curse. I just placed on them and not lose game one. <laughs> Good luck. Or, you know, and we'll, or we'll see if horizon uh, definitely don't flame out in this early game here. But yeah, Horizon are definitely going to have to play this early game. I expect to see them being very aggressive, you know, especially like the Aatrox and um, the uh, the Ari here. I mean, Zaya will still eventually do damage with the Lethality build and whatnot. But they're also going to have to be really careful because PGO just has so much CC. Um, you know, the Zillion stun, the Galio. Galio has two to three, you know, two, two to three... Uh, abilities of his that are just straight CC, depending on how he combos it. And then if he builds an Everfrost too, like that's another uh, item there. So yeah, yeah. there are obviously a lot of like stuns and slows for the side of PGO. I think what I would like for the side of Horizon to do mm -hmm. is kind of look for like maybe a dive, maybe like a like camping the bot side until this Zillion mm -hmm. hits six or like until Galia and Nocturne hits that level six. Because mm -hmm. once those like Nocturne and Galio ults come in, it's going to be mm -hmm. much harder to do a play in the side lane. Just mm -hmm. off because like if you overextend even like for one second, the enemy team has the like ability to just like um like just come come and like just press ult on you. And yeah, press you just, easy press R comp, right? <laughs> yeah, and then and then collapse pretty easily. And mm -hmm. after after those ultimates, as you said, Galio just Yalio has three ways to stun people or like knock up or like taunt right and yeah. then there's the zillion slows the bombs ash ultimate yeah ash slows like there's just too much nocturne fear anything 
So yeah. they need to be really careful with how they play. Yeah, definitely indeed. And we will have to see how both of these teams navigate the rift and navigate that paranoia that Charizard will be, you know, dashing into their hearts. So we'll just have to keep our eye on that. But before we cut to a short break here, I just also want to remind our viewers at home about Pro Comps, which is a drafting tool that's the first of its kind aimed at competitive and solo queue play. Uh, it, Pro Comps allows the user live feedback and analysis on drafting, giving them recommendations on picks, notes on matchups here, such as Nocturne into Volley Bear, uh, and analysis on enemy team's win conditions. Uh, I think we can say the win con for PGO is definitely the Trendomir split. <laughs> These features allow the user to gain an edge on their opponent and improve their drafting skills. You can use this code CCS25 for 25% off on your first six months. Once again, that's CCS25 for 25% off on your first six months. And with that being said, we're going to cut to break here. We'll be right back for game one of Horizon Gaming versus Predictive Gaming Odin. You don't want to miss it.
Welcome back everyone as we are getting ready. Actually, we're here for game one of Horizon Gaming versus Predictive Gaming Odin. And we already see ourselves a five stack coming out from the Horizon Gaming squad here. Will they bear fruit for their conquest? We'll suss that by the trend demand. We see the pings, we see the recalls. The answer is no. Sultan, while we have some time now, since that's been sussed out, let's take a look at summoners and rune state. Anything interesting, out of ordinary, weird? Not really. We just see the AOE coming from Scombs, which means he's going to be going for the lately really popular uh, Lethality Zaya. Mm -hmm. um, we see the cleanse coming from Oddmitch, which is interesting because... He's not going to be able to use it to like Bravo's Q or like the mm -hmm. headbutt combo. So that's one of the things. I guess he can use it to Ari Charm, the Zaya root. So there's still like a lot of things that he can cleanse. It's just a safety yeah. build, which is fine. Um, I would have maybe liked to see an exhaust just so that they can use it on maybe Ari, maybe Aatrox when, he's, when they're trying to like get on top of this Ash. You also mm -hmm. see the Predator coming from Galio. So that means he's going to be looking to roam, looking to roam around with Charizard, which should be the game plan for the side of, um, for the side of PGO. That's a really, at least realizing, really good at realizing his VinCon and how to play the game. So. Yeah, definitely indeed. Oops, I dropped my spoon there. <laughs> um, definitely indeed, as we see ourselves some early game trading here between the bot lane, but right now it's just, you know, a little bit here and there, back and forth. They're both just trying to get as much CS as possible, probably looking for that level two, but Archon and Huffstone, definite Archon especially being really aggressive into this Trindamir early. I mean, as he should, right? Like, yeah. he doesn't have level six yet. You want you want to try and punish Trindamir as early as possible, pre-six, because it just becomes that much harder to deal with once he does hit that level six. Especially for Aatrox, he he has a little bit more range that he can fight with, especially mm -hmm. um, with his Q. If he if he's able to hand those like um, the tip of the Darkin Blade, those things do yeah. a lot of damage. And we see mid as whole okay. gray man gets the taunt, gets the knock up onto the Ari here. Nocturne is here to back up his mid laner, and first blood will be claimed by the side of PGO. Whole grain man and Charizard picking that up. Yeah. Um. It's, it's bad, but it's not the end of the world. No, of course, Galio gets the kill, especially like he started with the Dark Seal. He, mm -hmm. he committed that, and like if it didn't work out, it would have might have a little bad for him because he, he doesn't get mm -hmm. the extra mana. It's a really snowball rune. It's really good that he get that going at three minutes in. Mm -hmm. now, now he's getting the reset, probably gonna pick up an Emptom or maybe a Ruby Crystal. But, oh, he picks uh, up the boots, the actually. Yeah. A boots and a no magic mantle. He's respecting the Ari. That, that, yeah. Uh, actually, I like, still Ari, you know? Yeah. And, like, if when he finishes his Merc Treads, it's going to be really mm -hmm. hard for the Ari to do anything to him in lane. Like, Galio, in general, is really good into mages because of his, like, high yeah. MR stats. Also, the MR yep. shield that yep. he gets from his W's passive. So. Especially with the Merc Treads, this Ari will not really have a fun time in the mid lane. Especially in a 1v1 situation. Do you think he maxes W in the early game until he gets to 6 then? Because sometimes uh, I, I, I would do that if I'm against a, like a heavy... If I know I'm going to be out damaged or out poked early game, I'll max W first on Galio just for more uh, resistances and survivability. Um, it, I mean, he doesn't need to, but you know, well, it's just something curious to think about. Maybe if the enemy team had more AP threats, it would have been... Mm -hmm. Fine. Like, I think you need to get your Q maxed out. Just because since you're running the Predator, you're Galio, you want to use your ultimate. You want to max out your Q yeah. to push these waves as fast as possible. We see a uh, As fast as possible, indeed. As Volley Bear tried to get something onto this bot lane here of PGO, but the Zillion speed up ensures that they are safe. And the yeah. Volley Bear is sorry. And now sussed out, as they know where the Volley Bear is. Yeah. Um, it, it's actually a fine trade. It's the, they traded Jackal's Flash for Oddmitch's Flash and Cleanse. So mm -hmm. if if they look for another play... Nocturne is here, though. Nocturne is looking. Flash out from the edge. 
Charizard still wants it though, gets knocked back from Bravo there, and he will back off as well. Yeah. Oh. Okay, just trade him. <laughs> just trade him. Both junglers actually are like doing a really good job of mm -hmm. making sure these ADCs are not having a fun time in lane because um, now both ADCs not having their defensive summoner spells. Oh, oh my, the crit just. Yeah, the Q2 damage. missed. Oh man. <laughs> Top zone, this is too much. The crits are just like too strong right now. Yeah, super top huff zone, definitely playing really oh. well right now. Oh, oh, he dodged it again. Okay, <laughs> right, I see you, super top. He gets his level six. If he is, if he had a reset where he had like mm -hmm. maybe a pickaxe like Archon, I'm pretty sure he would have yeah. went for the dive. But <laughs> um, he's going to look for. Eh, they find the Volibear in the jungle again. They're doing a really good job of just tracking Jackal in their mm -hmm. early game. Um, especially when Charizard already was able to get to the mid lane, get that kill onto the Ari. Mm -hmm. um, just making sure Volibear doesn't get the early game presence that he normally has. Because well, that, that's a strong thing about Volibear. He can outdo most of the junglers. He's really good at ganking early on. And after 6, he's good at diving. But if you stop him down, especially early in the game, it makes it so yeah. bad. Ooh. Ooh. As the taunt oh. stun lands from surprise here, whole green man gets the ignite onto the Ari. She's ticking. She's burning. She is down as surprise gets the kill. Yeah, good roam. I think Horizon just didn't respect the rotation. Like, they, they just heard the dragon going down, so maybe playing a little bit safer in the mid lane would have helped, but... Oh, Skomps might be just dead here. Skomps definitely caught out and a bit forward as Surprise and Odomich just basically gunned the RE down there with those volleys of arrows, so... This PGO bot lane definitely taking the advantage. PGO as a hold and oh. taking an early game advantage here. And this is not what Horizon want. They want to be the early game team that has the advantage. But unfortunately, it has not worked out in their favor so far. Oh, Ooh. A lot of Archon. Oh, one more hit here. Archon does have ult. Oh, do you think he, he, he hesitated? I think he yeah. was scared. He should have. He should have. He should have ulted and dove him like right away. I think he would have got it. Maybe. Oh, Charizard. But Charizard is now here with the paranoia flash out from Archon here. But it's not enough. He's taken down. Yeah. It was. It was a good bait play from Hopzone, just baiting out the ultimate from Archon, making him push yeah. forward. Oh. Oh, Green Man gets the knockout onto Kaiser Uwu. Kaiser Uwu using that Spirit Rush to ensure he has some distance there. As Surprise does burn his flash for the ultimate of the Ari there. We're already seeing like really good map rotations from the side of PGO. They're just like playing this game super aggro, super ma like making sure that like Horizon is not having the early game pressure that they want to have. And mm -hmm. like you see, like after these level six started to come in, Nocturne just picking up the kill in the top side onto the Archon. Like, that was the, the, the first Nocturne ultimate that we've seen. And the, the, they still have the Galio, they still have Ash's um, um, Enchanted Crystal Arrows. They still have the, um, what was its name? Hero, Hero's Entrance from the Galio, so. Yeah, Heroic Entrance, Heroic yeah. Entrance. Yeah. Oh, and now Bravo. Oh no, Bravo caught out here. His whole grain man gets the top. That kill should be going over to the Galio. Or oh, actually, they give it to Otto Mitch, which is actually really good. So, Otto Mitch now, this Ash 2 0 and 0, 150 gold bounty. Yeah, it's looking rough. One thing that's going good is that their CS numbers, they're CSing much mm -hmm. better than the side of PGO, mm -hmm. but CSing doesn't matter as much when you're. This Galley Brazilian combo is insane and it does not stop. PGO are on a tear right now. Oh my goodness. I think the Zillion might be the surprise is being a surprise all across the rift right now. Yeah. I think it's just really unlucky for the cut. Like, not, not only unlucky, it's really well played from the side of PGO, but it's been just like mistakes coming from Kaiser. Especially after dying the early on in the game. Um, mm -hmm. And then 
afterwards, like when you burn your spirit rush and you you know that you don't have your flash up, you have to play with mm. extra respect to the side of PGO's like CC. Like we're seeing, like the E comes in from the Alio, ta taunts comes right on top, and then mm -hmm. the, the zillion bombs are just stacked up too. So it's like super hard for them to do anything. The Oddmitch is alone here. Kind of, yeah, this is kind of wild. Like this surprise is now on the top side of the map here, and his Ash is left alone. But she's, you know, Oddmitch is doing pretty well, holding his own. But we do see Jackal here. Stalking the Ash and the Nocturne as Nocturne ultimates in, oh, but Scott bad. uses the feather feather there to ensure oh. that he stays alive. Whole Grain Man will secure the kill onto the Zaya though as Odmich gets the arrow. They're trying to claim something back for themselves. It looks like only the Nocturne will go down on the yeah. side of PGL here. I thought they would use the Ash arrow way earlier than mm -hmm. how they used to. They used it a little too late. Um, it could have been like a much easier kill. Like they they got they got the Charizard. Yep, we're seeing the replay here. Bravo was looking for the dive, and then the mm -hmm. the Nocturne Galio ultimate combo comes in. Ash ultimate comes just so late here. Like it's still uh, not on. It's still not on. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut that replay short though, Sultan. As we see Hubstone and Arkin here fighting this one v one mano a mano, and Hubstone will claim the kill onto the Archon there. 1-0-1 for the Trendemir, who is still down about 22 CS. Or 20... Yeah, it's about 22 CS. That's that's the strength of Trindemir. Actually... Oh, were you gonna say something? Oh, no, no. Go oh, ahead. okay. But that's the strength of Trindemir. You just, like... How... it Sometimes it just doesn't matter how ahead you are. It's just like the champion is just built for the 1v1. Like, he doesn't dive and he gets low. And the problem is the fact that when he burns the ghost and flash, it's just impossible to get away from. Him. It's just literally impossible. You're seeing impossible. Yeah, definitely impossible to get away from. Indeed, as Hugs Rising Gaming went for a terrible fight and now are being punished as PGO are just tearing through them here. You see Odd Mitch hiding out the rest of these Horizon squad members. Galio is looking like a carry when he is typically not. My goodness. As the Volibear and Ari are just going to have to run back towards their base. Yeah. That fight actually looked much worse than the start for PGO. But just because of ahead this Galio and Ash are, they were able to kind of turn it back. Charizard goes mm -hmm. down in the process. But... Like, you took the dragon, you're on two dragons, you, you, you already got the dragon stacking going on for yourself, so... It's always good. Charizard didn't even have a shutdown, so it's not even that important for them. The fact that they yeah. like, oh, they still traded a kill for that. And, and we're not done with the action here. It's Charizard in a zone look to punish this Aatrox once again, and he goes down. Yeah. The day are just not respecting the potential off the ultimates that PGO has. Like, just from like the start of the game, they've just like been like pushing a little too far away, overextending in lanes. And Charizard yeah. has been really on point with his ultimates to kind of um, just play off the mistakes of the Horizon Gaming. And now we see the, the CS gap is not even as much as it was in the top lane. The, the junglers the are old even... Gap. <laughs> yeah, it's just ridiculous. And the almost the first turret going down in the top lane. I wonder what, what he's going to finish. He's sitting on 3k gold almost right now. Huff zone in the top lane, so... Mm -hmm. uh, he may have greeted just a little bit though. His ultimate is up. His Archon flashes. Gets the Q3 knocked up onto the Trinomir here. He's still chasing him. He gets the kill. He will be able to secure that for himself as he's definitely needed a little bit of gold infusion on this Aatrox here who has been punished quite heavily so far in this early game. Yeah. He was playing the lane fairly well in the beginning until mm -hmm. Charizard eventually came topside and um, punished him for how aggro he was trying to play without mm -hmm. actually enough vision. Um, we see even after the kill that he got onto the Hofstone, Hofstone is still up 800 gold due to his, um, due to him taking the first turret. 
I kind of want to see Horizon kind of playing more towards these side lanes as they are right now. As they are right now, as Kaiser, ooh, Everfrost goes wide on the Galio, but they will not leave without a kill being claimed. The Resurrect is used on whole green man, but he, oh, he uses the ultimate and he's able to get himself some distance between himself and the side of Horizon Gaming here. Well played from whole green man. Kaiser, ooh, I don't, I wonder if his E was down on cooldown still, or like the Alias Star could have, you know, headbutt. They could have used some type of CT to interrupt that and they would have killed him. Yeah, I think they just didn't expect it, and they were not able to react to it, and that is just huge for the side of PGO because um, Whole Green Man has a 300 gold shutdown, and they're already taking the Herald, so like now they get the prior for the Herald, Horizon's bot side play goes, just turns out empty, and now they yep. just lose another objective. Net, net zero, right. or net negative, if anything. As you see the teleport arrow, Coming in here on Kaiser Uwu will be able to live though. Archon is here to back up his team. And Horizon, uh, not Horizon, Predictive Gaming, I'm just gonna back off for now. Yeah. Bravo, getting a little bit zesty here. Testing the waters. Yeah, the and nothing's from, gonna come up for now. Yeah. The heal from Scumps barely um, helped uh, Kaiser to live there. Lives on like maybe 100 HP at best. Mm -hmm. and, like, we've seen the same combo over and over again from Whole Grain Man and Surprise, right? Like, the taunt into double bomb. That's just a lot of damage at this point in the game for this Ari to tank. Like, he's sitting on yeah. the Everfrost and Merc Treads, but like, even then, the Shrelly is being completed, the, the Rocket Belt also being finished in the mid lane. It's just mm -hmm. super hard for him to kind of have an answer for that, unless he gets a Spirit Rush in time. Yeah, definitely hard indeed. And I want to ask you, Sultan, here, as we see objective bounties are now up for Horizon Gaming. 17 minutes into the game here, how, how can they get back into this game? Like, how can they, you know, stabilize this mid-game here before, um, you know, PGO completely take over the map since... They did have the more skill-heavy composition, but they're ahead already. But I think you might have to answer that question later here, so we might have ourselves a little Drake fight as Whole Green Man and Surprise are just warding off the side of Horizon Gaming here, but they're not even in position right now. As we see the Charm Cleanse coming out from Odd Mitch here, as oh. Kaiser Uwu was trying to kill this Ash here, he's now punished instead, and he will go down. Yeah. I that that whole play was actually really well played from the side of PGO. Oh, they we're not done. This combo is deadly. This combo is dangerous. <laughs> Surprise and whole grain man are e two P's in a pod as they are just oh. playing chicken with the side of Horizon Gaming here. And now PGO taking this entire red side quadrant for themselves as they look to get this tier two turret in the bot lane. Yeah. Like, that whole play, what I was trying to say was, like, the whole play from PGO was actually well played. They gave up the Dragon, but they also know the only way the Horizon, like, the Forty Side of Horizon can come back into this game is if they force a team fight and lose. So, they didn't. They, they, they picked up the Herald from the earlier play that Horizon failed in the bot side. So, that, that let them, let PGO to take the Herald. And then, it, mm -hmm. the Herald was on Huffzone, so Huffzone didn't come to the team fight. They gave up Dragon. They took mid lane tier one. They took top side. They they took a tier two third and an inhib third. Oh, they took tier three. Wait, yeah, they took wow, two I didn't two even third. notice that. It must have been going on during the fight or something. Yeah, well, exactly. They were they were just like trying to stall the backs from the side of Horizon so that Puffson would be able to get that split push going. And like it, yes, Horizon was able to pick up a dragon. They didn't pick up any kills, they didn't pick up any shutdowns, and... Oh, well, as the Featherstorm comes out from Scomps here, but Whole Grain Man just does so much damage! I've not seen a Galio solo kill in ADC in a very long time, but that, my friend, right there, that was violence. That That's a fed Galio. Like, he's, he's sitting on 400 gold, not too much, but he is the one of the richest players in the game. Well, obviously, Huffstone, after the la last topside t split push play that he did, he's sitting on AK. And then after that, his whole game, man, sitting at 7,400 gold. 
He has 10 stacks on his Dark Seal. Finished Mythic. Sitting on the stopwatch for safety. This is so hard for Scomps to do anything at only two items. Like you saw, he burned the Feather Storm, but it was great recognition recognition from Whole Grain Man. Hauled onto his W, and he was actually able to get the taunt, even though Feathers, uh, Feather Storm was used from the Zaya. Yeah, definitely, and I think she used the Blade Collar as well, you know, to like root him into place, but he timed it really well. <laughs> but we see ourselves another skirmish here in the mid lane between the Trindamir and the Zillion there. Nocturne is shadowing in the blue quadrant of Horizon Gaming, so they do need to be a bit aware and cognizant of this Nocturne. There are bounties on four members of Predictive Gaming Odin right now, Sultan. This is nuts. Horizon Gaming, they need to look for a pick here and try to avoid team fights as much as possible, in my opinion, to try and get some of this bounty gold into their wallets. Yeah, they they need like a miracle team fight. It's just like that's the that that's it. Like that's the only thing that they need. Archon face checking into. A, I think he's Archon dead. Archon face checking into Huff Zone here, but Huff Zone not backing down. He wants to fight this Trinity here. He will use the Gale Force Flash to get it's in range to secure the kill but we see there's the shutdown as Skomps gets the shutdown onto Charizard here and now they might be looking for this Baron they might be looking for some more they're gonna have to play this carefully though as they want to try and kill this Galio but the hope coming in from the Ash it was just too much as Jackal will have to smite the Baron to ensure that he lives a bit longer Predator Galio has been activated Kaiser Uwu is on the retreat we see Skomps and Bravo here warding off the Galio though and that looks to be all from this fight right now. So one for one in the Baron Pit and the bot lane for both sides. Yeah, the overall the play turns out to be a one for one. But again, Hubstone takes the kill and then he's also able to take a tier two. Tier two turrets when you take them alone is almost worth close to one and a half, two kills worth of gold. So it's mm. always a plus. It's a net win for the side of PGO. Like the shutdown that yeah. they were able to pick up onto the Charizard was only 150 gold. It's not the end of the world. He's also going to be up for this dragon fight. Um, I think Horizon still has a chance in these team fights if the side of PGO is not coordinated enough. Yeah, a chance indeed. But how do you get them uncoordinated when you have a... Oh, never put that thought though. As we see these Charizard just... Using the paranoia onto the back line there, Skomps will have to use the Feather Storm. Whole Great Man is chasing the Zaya out of the team fight. We're seeing Charizard and Surprise here bursting down this army and bursting down the rest of Horizon Gaming. They are just getting shredded by the CC of PGO. And this looks like it's going to be an ace for the side of PGO as they take out the last member of Horizon Gaming here. And they will secure themselves the Infernal Drake as well. Yeah. The fight actually didn't look that bad in the beginning. We're gonna see it late again. Scomps almost killed whole oh, game yeah. and he was super right. low. But surprise flashing to flash igniting to make sure um, Kaiser dies and then Archon being left in a 1v4. It's just I PGO played this fight really coordinated and it just mm -hmm. kinda of paid off. Puffzone didn't even have his Trindamir ultimate back up. So now they didn't burn that cooldown, so he can still split push freely, and he pushes the bot wave in again. It's just, it's looking like it's a little bit too far gone. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah, the side ahead, lane sorry. is, I'm so sorry, uh, the side lane is too far gone. Like, mm -hmm. the Aatrox cannot face the stream to me right now. The ultimates are have been used really effectively from Charizard and Whole Grain Man. And Oddmage has been doing a really good job of like just not getting picked and Scomps. Yeah, definitely indeed as Scomps using the Feather Storm here. Scomps is just getting bullied by this Galio Zillion pick here. And Sultan, I think we're going to see some bans coming out. Um, <laughs> bans coming out in game two as we have ourselves a slight pause here. I wonder what it could be. Okay, we're gonna see the replay again. Okay, yeah, uh, go ahead. We saw, like, th this fight was really well played, I think, especially from Surprise. He used the Zillion mm -hmm. ult to, um, like, revive the one pick that Horizon was able to get. But then, also, mm -hmm. the Zillion ult just makes it so that 
the, the reset that you want to get for the Aatrox for the Ari just doesn't happen. So it, it is really hard um, for Horizon to actually play this game at, at this point. They can't get the fast kill onto Trindamir. They can't get the fast kill onto anyone else because of the Zillion. And when the fight is that extended, this Trindamir just starts yeah. hitting like a truck. It's just so hard. Yeah, hitting like a truck indeed. I think we're going to get ourselves... Uh, oh no, I think that's the same replay, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I thought, I thought we were getting a replay of a different fight here, but it seems I was wrong. There's still Anna still figuring out what the issue is for the pause here, but go ahead and we can talk about this fight here, Sultan. <laughs> this was just like this this utilization of Galio. The Galio escape, the great escape. <laughs> yeah. He, he was probably like one second away from like a possible Zaya, Zaya feathers just being pulled back or like an Alistar the cube. The call it there, yeah. Yeah. So that, that was really well played. The, the thing is not even picking up the skill. They just committed three mm. members here. So they gave up the Herald. And then the next fight with this Herald, Popstone just like opened up the whole top side. Right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, like it just doesn't end there. Like th these plays from PGO that are giving them a lead is actually snowballing mm -hmm. into even bigger leads. Which Definitely they were... snowballing into... Oh yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. no. I, ju I just finished Okay, I was gonna say yeah, definitely snowballing into bigger leads here. But this is the fight here where um it looked like for a second, oh you know, like you said, you said um this fight has started off so bad for the side of PGO, but they managed to turn it around and actually um do pretty well. Or am I? Yeah, yeah, that was that fight. As oh, we are back in game. Uh, thank God that you know those issues were sorted out, and yeah, we are back here on the live live on the rift here. And um, let's just take a look at the gold right now, um, Sultan. You say so. It's about oh god, it's, all, it's about it's it's very close to a 10k gold lead for the side of PGO here. As we see Charizard, the arrow coming out from Odd Mitch. There, they really want to kill this cow, but he's gonna just walk it off. And uh, had ourselves a little bit of a lag there, but you know, spectator delay and whatnot. Just trying to make sure that competitive integrity stays intact. Um. But now we see PGO posturing around this Baron here, and I think they might be looking to bait it out for a fight. I mean, they probably want to fight so bad because they're so ahead and they're so strong. But and they, you know, it lessens the chance of a Baron 50/50, uh, right? But they're uh, starting it right now here. I don't know if it would be a 50/50. It's really hard for Horizon to walk in, especially while the Galio is trying to just push out. And Hor mm -hmm. like PC pops on just like pushing Archon. Archon doesn't even have TP, so they, they have to kind of give this one up. They're just really behind in gold, and yeah, there's just not much else to say. They're just really behind in gold, and the item lead. I must to say indeed, but it looks like they have something they want to say instead, as they decided we want to kill this Trindamir. The Everfrost goes wide, though. The so Spear Rush is on his back, as Kaiser Uwu will get the kill and the shutdown gold. That's 500 plus some more going into his pockets, which is very good for this Ari, who may be one of the uh, initiators to get his team back into the game here. But there's still plenty of gold on this map. And now, Skomps, you are out of position. Arrow goes wide. Featherstorm comes up. But the taunt is here. The knockup is here. The bomb is there as well. And Zaya goes down. Just very terrible uh, positioning from Skomps there in this, I would say, late mid-game here. I don't know if we're in completely late game just yet. But now, we're not done. As the paranoia comes out and Kaiser Uwu will have to use the stasis there. To try and keep himself alive a bit longer it's not enough though as charizard and the squad take him out they are just running down the rest of this horizon gaming squad here posturing them away from this turret whole green man is is a whole grain tank it's not even a whole grain tank because he's not soft indeed he's totally a statue as the champion is implied he is now godlike and just ripping through the side of horizon gaming here Chrono Shift will be used to keep him alive as Jackal and Skomps are just staring at the tatters of their base, trying to keep this game going a bit longer. And PGO will give them the permission to do so as they back off for the reset. Yeah. 
It's just really aggressive plays coming from the side of PGO. If you're gonna see a replay, Odd Mitch just slowing down with the auto attacks and then the bombs coming from surprise. It's been a problem for the side of Horizon all game. Those zillion bombs, these taunts coming from whole green men, they haven't really been mm -hmm. able to answer those um, abilities. And it's just, it just ends up being really crucial when they were trying to yeah. get the lead. like this Ari being 2 and 6 Scomps being 1 and 5 although he's like he's oh my god this, this is a this is a this is a disgusting combo the Galio Predator with the Zillion speed up and yeah. it doesn't honestly it doesn't even matter who gets the kill because apparently Zillion does damage anyway with just Shirelia's and the uh, Putrefire there and now it looks like he's building the Zanyas himself so um yeah, PGO are just... I know they're laughing in their comms, yo. <laughs> I, I, You can't tell me they're not laughing. Like, you are cracking up in comms right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're feeling themselves at least. Um, like, th these zillion bombs, I want to check. Like, one bomb right now is doing 530 magic damage. And, like, when he looks, wow. comms alone has, like, 1500 damage. So, two bombs, he doesn't have too much MR. That's basically almost ha like one third, two thirds of his HP gone, just from the mm. two zillion bombs. That are that is not even the main damage right now, especially with the Infernal Soul now, and it's just looking really rough. Oh, Maybe Kaiser Uwu playing really hard to try and get this kill onto the Trindamir. He will use the Zanyas to ensure his lives a bit longer. Oh, I think he might be able to, but now whole Gray Man is here to clean him up. And guess who's right behind him? The Zillion, who's gonna back up his mid laner here. He uses the Chrono Shift, flashes away from the Aatrox there. I don't know if that was a good idea. He probably should've let him kill you, as now he's looking to get that kill, but he misses from the speed up, and whole great man gets the CC onto the Aatrox there, and Archon is down, but Jackal, or I'm sorry, Jackal and Bravo are here to clean up the Galio. He will be cleaned up, but Zillion skips away with a sliver of his life as now Skomps and Ottomich are dueling it out. But wait, oh my god, surprise, 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 it had a surprise for Jackal there as there was a Charizard that flew down onto his head and Skomps and Ottomich, uh, Ottomich particularly is cleaning trying to clean up this inhibitor turret here but he is now a lonely ash with only a nocturne behind him he needs to be careful and to ensure he doesn't get picked off here yeah i think that bravo fight... bravo. bravo what are you oh bravo is just bravo's trying to delay their backs i think he's just trying to delay on from backing to possibly uh... get a pick but Charizard being there helped him out, but he did have to pop the ultimate though. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's worth it to like just burn your unbreakable veil because you're gonna need it for the Baron that is coming up shortly. But I think the cooldown on it is not too high, so he should be fine. It's about a minute and 10 seconds right now. Yeah. So uh, I yeah. think that fight looked not bad for us, and just because like they were able to pick up the shutdown onto the surprise, the shutdown onto whole great man. The problem there is that. Surprise the shutdown went to Jackal, who's building tank, and then Whole Green's men's 1000 gold shutdown went to Bravo, who's like the person that you don't want oh. to shut down. So, yeah, that, that was really unlucky in that sense. Like, the, the, mm -hmm. those sh shutdowns being taken almost means nothing. Bravo gets to finish one of his items, but like, it, I don't know if Frostfire saves the game, like, not Frostfire, Frozen Heart saves the game for them. Yeah, yeah, and like you said, I mean, a thousand gold going onto an Alistar in the late game is it, not the greatest. Like, unfortunately, if Kaiser or a Skomps or even a, or Archon, I would say even Jackal, it would be better to get that shutdown going onto yeah. because, like, they, they still do a lot more damage than what your Alistar is going to do. But now we see... PGO here working on this Baron and it's just being torn asunder and yeah Horizon Gaming are not even going to contest this second Baron going over to the side of PGO here and now they'll be looking for this top inhibitor and mid lane inhibitor as well yeah once they open three inhibs it's basically going to be GG oh, oh. oh boy 
Wait, but he's still alive though. But yeah, Charizard's gonna clean him up. He finally lands an Everfrost root for the first time, I believe, all game. But it's it doesn't matter. He's cleaned up here. Bravo and the rest of the squad are trying to defend their base as Whole Green Man uses the stasis there, and now he has the rest as well. But we see Archon and Trindomir fighting in the top of our screen. Scott uses the feather storm there he will be able to get the kill onto the galio as charizard flashes in and misses the zaya but he gets the inhibitor as well and hubzone getting a triple kill off screen and just 1v3 or not 1v3 but just decimating the rest of horizon gaming there oh. and game one will go over to pgo here that last fight didn't even look that bad they almost won of course, Hofstan kind of stalling his death out with the, um, I think it was Undying Rage from the Trindomir. So, yeah, yeah, they just didn't really have an answer. I think the team fights sometimes didn't go as bad as it should have because, like, we saw a head whole green man and, like, surprise was compared to the end, like, compared to the other team. But, like, they still gave up some kills, which was kind of fine it wasn't the end of the world but like the side of horizon just didn't have an answer for hopstone in the side lane especially aatrox is not a champion that you would like think that can hold trindomir in the side lane they they always like yeah. they were forced to send at least two three people to even like get him close to dying and like yeah. when they did that every single time pgo was doing something on the other side of the map either taking an objective either picking off it's picking off a kill it was really well played from the side of PGO, kind of knowing how they should have played the game out and executing it pretty mm -hmm. correctly. Yeah, definitely indeed. Like PGO played that PGO played that game so well. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, Horizon Gaming looked a little bit lost. Um oh. and they didn't look very well coordinated. It, they were kind of sloppy too. I mean, Scomps got caught up. We saw there in mid lane, Kaiser Uwu also got caught up a few times. And um honestly, I'm very um uh, I'm very curious as to how the game two bands are gonna go because I mean the Xillion Galio combo was not something I expected to see be such an overpowering combo, but it, it felt like it was because once the Galio got ahead and then the Zillion was just boosting him up with the Predator. So yeah. I, I've never seen a Galio that strong, you know, in a while, actually. It's it was pretty funny. <laughs> pretty yeah. comical. I, I think as far as draft goes for the second game, I'm a fan of red side. I feel like there isn't really a champion that you can like, oh yeah, I'll we just need to B1 this and then we're gonna win the game. So I feel mm -hmm. like red side has a lot of prio because you always like get at least like two or three really really favorable matchups for your champions. And mm -hmm. like when when it happens like that, like we saw Trindomir was the counter pick and it worked super well. Like it, let's say Horizon gets to be the red side this game. P PGO goes for the blind picture in the mirror. Maybe um, Horizon or maybe Archon is like really likes the Jack Trindomir matchup where maybe he can actually stop the Trindomir in the side lane. So we, we will see. Um, I think red side draft will be different from the side of Horizon. I think PGO will not be allowed to have this much global ultimates, like global. <laughs> like team fight potential while also winning the lanes um i think also like a few things daya just opting for the heal instead of the cleanse while when the enemy team has like an ash arrow the the galia taunt the zillion bombs i'm pretty sure if he had the cleanse he would have at least lived a few times like burning his ultimate to one cc then the cleanse yeah. to another and then maybe he would have had chance to live uh like small things but i think game two will be a little closer than what we had here. But even this game, although it looked really doomed from the beginning, it was a 33-minute game. So, oh, okay. It kind of goes but back I mean, to in, the it, I mean, in terms of league gameplay nowadays, is 33 minutes, like, long anymore? That's I would say that's average. So, you know, that, they did do their best to hold on here. Um, so, kudos to Horizon Gaming for that. But we'll have to see... Um, you know, how they fare in game two as we're going to cut to a short break, but we'll be back for game two to see if Horizon can force it or if PGO will get that 2-0 and, you know, better seating for the playoffs here. But we'll be right back, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everyone, as we are here getting ready for Game 2 draft of Predictive Gaming Odin, Predictive Gaming Odin <laughs> versus Horizon Gaming. And um, yeah, so Sultan, as we get ready for draft here, uh, which should be starting up very shortly, we have PGO now on the blue side and Horizon on the red side, as you predicted. Uh, once again, so what do you expect to see, or what do you think we're going to see as um, these drafts are coming in hot? We should see a Nocturne Ben, in my opinion. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of the problems that um, Horizon had came from yep. the Nocturne being like really effective <sighs> early on there in the game after the ultimate. Oh my scenario. goodness! Like switching that, the like Warwick Ben for Galio and Nocturne. Mm -hmm. um, now, this gives PGO Thresh or Warwick if they want to opt in for it. Correct. So, we're going to see if they go for one of those picks. They go for the oh, Warwick. And they first pick the Warwick on blue side. Oh my god. Let's get it. The Volibear answer. Not bad. I think Volibear wasn't too bad last game. I think he just... Uh, for the side of PGO, just tracked him really well and mm -hmm. it eventually led up to him not being able to do a lot if and a lot of it was the ash like those uh hawk shots yeah. are, just makes it so hard for a jungler to play the game and like path without the enemy team knowing what you're doing um so maybe pgo can opt in for it ash is a really safe pick it got buffed i think a couple of patches ago it's been, it's it's been been really like strong. two three patches in a row now i believe yeah um and... so yeah there it is. Yeah, there it is indeed. As um, we saw Horizon R1, uh, the Volibear, and R2 Jin actually. Um, so that was very, that's a very interesting pick to me because we haven't really seen Jin a lot uh, in the meta. Uh, he's still, you know, he's still a pretty good pick. It's just he hasn't been priority because, I mean, like Zeri is open. Jinx is open. There's... You know the the S tier picks right now that are still available to play, and um, you know I find it very hilarious, and I'm very curious as to I think I know what PGO might do, so I'm gonna just predict it here and see if it happens. Um, we're gonna get to that casting and pig in just a second, mm -hmm. but they've got the Vigar there, so that's probably gonna be a predator Vigar. If Horizon Gaming is smart, I think you ban Zillion here. Oh yes, like I the think Warwick? they're trying to run that back. Yeah, just with like, a different champion. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Vegar is like not as strong as Galio in a sense that like it's there not is. as easy as to pick. The Zillion I think worked really well. I think this game it would have been harder to do anything, especially with the Warwick. Right, like the Warwick runs at you. He's super tanky, super sustainy, and like once you kill him, Zillion just revives him. It would be really hard to play. Yeah. On the other hand, the Kassadin pick, as you said, it is actually a decent counter pick to Vegar. You can't really um, like pick him off. Like you put the cage down, he just ults out. It's mm -hmm. super like easy for Kassadin to like get out when the white guy is around him. It scales super well. It can almost match Vegar's scaling. O of course, like Kassadin can only scale until level 16. Vegar is yeah. an infinitely scaling champion, so the if the game goes too long. He's going to eventually have like 1.2k AP <laughs> as how yeah. Y-Guy works. But I, I, I think the reasoning behind the Jin pick mm -hmm. is Jin is a really comfort pick for Scomps. And they're not really playing towards bot side. They're usually having the weak side bot with mm -hmm. like Bravo and these champions such as like Alistar. That can possibly roam. Last game, they were able to shut that down really easy. With uh, surprise and making the first move out of the bot lane, but yeah. like yeah, again, like we see the Leona, it can roam pretty easily with the Wally Bear, and I think they they have to just be more proactive. Like that, that's it. Like they just have to be more proactive. Is Leona proactive enough for you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, they were not really proactive with the Alistar, so you know it's kind of a playstyle thing. Yeah. If, if their support is willing to or like good at roaming. Oh! Oh my goodness. The Tarek is locked in here for PGO. Wow. And now this should be our blind uh, top laner here for once again. Um, Huff Zone there. Super top zone. We'll see what pick he picks here in just a bit as we have about 10 seconds left. 
for the top laner of PGO, and it will be the set. Hmm. Interesting. Why? Ter- I think one of the first interesting is Tarek. He's basically saying, okay, I might not be able to revive my teammates, but I'm going to mm-hmm. make them invulnerable. Invulnerable. In- yeah, you. invulnerable. Correct, yeah. <laughs> and, like, set also works really well as a disengage tool and an engage tool if you need him be. Um, again, a really high CC comp coming from PGO, but this time, I think Horizon has a little bit better matchups. Uh, mm-hmm. Not bad scaling and much more CC. I think with the Leona, with Jin, with Volibear, they should be able to go for easier picks. The mm-hmm. enemy team is not Zillion. Like Tarek Ultimate is fairly high cooldown compared to the Zillion ult. And like Tarek wants to be in the front line. He can't, like, he has this obviously the CC and the uh, heals. But like Zillion is just so irritating to play against. When yeah. he's just like speeding up the whole team with Shrelias, like like Perma, like he can't slow you down too. That's a yeah. that's a really awkward thing about that champion. So this yeah. time I think Horizon has a better chance to play the game overall. Yeah, we got to thank Bjergsen for uh, the Zillion really gaining prominence. I mean, because like it's not that he was nerfed or anything; he was just there, you know, collecting dust. But then Bjergsen started playing it a lot, and everyone's like, "Wait a minute." Wait, wait, wait a minute, Zillion. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but um, I wanted to definitely talk about, we see Archon here again on the Aatrox there. So any thoughts about that? I, I feel like we didn't really talk about it too much. Actually, as a matter of fact, the, the top side of PGO here are on, on the same champions. You know, we have the Volibear Aatrox once again Yeah. for uh, the top lane and jungle here. Yeah. I think I think Aatrox was working fine. Like he was able to push a mm-hmm. really good CS lead early on into the game. But eventually I think Charizard really um did a really good job of like kind of making sure that Aatrox doesn't get out of hand and getting the lead eventually to Huff Zone to carry the yeah. game. So this game set still strong side laner, but it's not as snowball y as Trindamir gets. Um on the other side, Set has better team fighting than Trindamir. So yeah. I think I yeah. think Geo will have better team fighting, a little bit less power in the side lane. But I think this game, thinking that like, like Horizon Gaming doesn't have a side laner either, like the side laner that can like permanently push lanes, it's going to be like coming down to these team fights and how well they're played. So mm-hmm. I think both Aatrox and Set are like similar to each other. Set just soaks up a lot of damage with the um, with the face yeah, breaker right. into yeah, the um, haymaker. It's just like a lot of shields and all that. So, man, Aatrox, we already know one Gore Drinker going back to full HP combo. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty irritating to play against, but we're gonna see how it goes. Yeah, we definitely are going to see. And I wanted to talk about. Um... What was I going to say here? It was something about the set Aatrox matchup. I can't recall verbatim what it was. You know what? If it comes back to me, we'll have time to talk about it in game as well. Um, I did want to talk about the um, Charizard on this Warwick as he has played it before. I don't remember when, but I feel like I've seen him on the pick and he did pretty well. And I mean, I, th- I believe you said it was also a, a comfort pick for him as well. So um, we should definitely see some heel cut coming out from the side of Horizon Gaming here, and hopefully we don't see Warwick like, get out of hand, because it is pretty disgusting what that champion can do if he snows balls a yeah. lead, you know? Yeah. He's just like a dog running behind you at 500 movement speed, with yeah. one thunder ready to bite you. So Yeah. And um, But, you know, I wanted to ask you once again uh, about the Cassidy in here. Like, I, didn't, I feel like we... We didn't really talk about the Cassidy, and we, we're not giving him his justice, or, you know, kind of throwing him some shade right now. But because he is a, such a, um, a um, you know, pivotal pick here, like, it's such a pick, like, you know, you have to wait till level 16. But he's like, he's just like Kale, like, you know, you, you yeah. wait till level 16, and then the champion is truly online. So, um, what do, what do we what are we are what are we gonna see here from Kaiser Uwe on this champion in the early to mid game? We definitely will probably see him mid game 
in the side lanes um, to you know get as much yeah. experience as possible. Um, as someone who played with Kaiser a fair amount of games, um, mm-hmm. I, I I know if for anyone who doesn't know in the chat, I was a previous jungler for the team of Horizon. Um, I was the first jungler of the team, and like every time Kaiser picked Cassidy, like I think like the team overall has like eighty percent win rate with the champion overall. Like he plays it really well. He knows them. He knows the champion really well. And he knows as far the as like, matchups. Yeah, he knows the matchups really well, and I'm pretty sure Vegar Kassadin is a favorite matchup for Kassadin, um, especially post after six, though, post right? Six. Well, post six, but like a Kassadin can also help pick Vegar off. Like the slow from the E is actually mm-hmm. like unexpectedly high, and a volley bear ganking um, on an overextended Vegar that can always like just be a kill, right? Okay. So you, you'll never know. But after six, Kassadin just starts kind of taking over the game and once yeah. the level 16 power spike hits in that's when like it gets really disgusting to play against yeah. Catherine. those the, the, those ultimates just really deal a lot of damage and really low cooldown so sultan my question for you before we cut to break here is um who do you think wins game two because we didn't really get to do serious predictions so i don't feel like it's fair if we do serious predictions now since we're already going kind of game by game so game two who, who, who are you favoring I'll 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 say we're gonna see Horizon win, and this is solely just me believing in um, Kaiser's Cassidy. Nothing All else. All right. All righty there. Well, you heard it here from Sultan here, former jungler of Horizon Gaming. He thinks they're going to take game two and send it to a game three. But we'll have to find out here shortly as we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back, everyone, as we are here for Game 2 of Horizon Gaming versus Predictive Gaming Odin. And we see PGO with the um, 
five stack here once again. I mean, as you should, you have the Vigar, you have the Warwick, you have the Taric. That's a lot of CC that I'm sure someone doesn't want to walk right into. But Horizon Gaming, just with the standard five-man lineup here. And Sultan, let's talk about uh, Runes and Summoners once again. And Oh, hold that thought, though. <laughs> oh. That was yes. P yeah, PGO gets spotted out, though, by the Leona there. So they're just going to drop a word in that blue buff and back off. All right, Sultan, let's talk about Runes and Summoners again before anything else happens. Um, I think Scomps at least this time paid the respects to the Ash and, like... Warwick, Tarek, mm -hmm. a lot of CC. He took the cleanse this time. Good ch good choice. Um, he he went for the Dark Harvest. It is it is it means that he wants to be more aggro. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people take mostly fleet just because of like the extra sustain. Also, the movement speed kind of lets you sometimes run out in a situation if you're kiting. Um, it might help. But he went for the Dark Harvest. It's a more aggressive. Um. Summoner, not summoner spell. Boon choice. The other, everything else is pretty, pretty normal. Alrighty, well that's good to know and that's good to hear. As um, you know, we're seeing both of our junglers here starting at their respective red, red, uh, red buffs. With Charizard skipping over his Raptors and going what looks like to be maybe Wolves and then Blue, and we see Jackal. Oh, by the way, for our viewers, I meant to mention this in game one. Uh, Jackal was adapt for Horizon Gaming. Uh, he just name changed. So not a new jungler, just, you know, same new skin or same jungler, new skin. Just put a different name. <laughs> so um, there's that just as a little tidbit of information. But uh, yeah, we see both of them pathing towards the opposite sides of the map here. So we should not see any contest for either Scuttle here. Um, and we're just going to keep our eyes on this set Aatrox matchup here as uh, Archon does have a little bit of the only early CS advantage. Yeah, and he's right now pushing in towards uh, the set. The wave is in the middle right now, but he has more minions. So it is a really, it's a, just a possible gank opportunity for Charizard. Um, mm -hmm. You're seeing Jackal on the ground right now and Huffzone trading. Trading indeed as Archon and Huffzone getting back and forth here. Q1 and Q2 hit. Q3 goes wide though. But now Charizard is here behind the Aatrox. He activates the Bloodlust there. Gets the Q fear onto the Aatrox. First blood going over to the Herpigio jungler there but there is a trade back in the mid lane as well as whole green man goes down so one for one for both squads and that's a pretty fair and even trade i would say indeed yeah both teams, teams at least not the champions <laughs> oh yeah well both teams actually getting um at least successful first ganks this is what i was mm -hmm. kind of talking about with weigar like the cage doesn't really give you a hundred percent safety if you're too overextended, the slow comes down from Kaiser, the point click stun from ja like Jackal's Volley Bear, and you're dead meat as a really squishy Vega. Oh, also, when you asked me, I didn't really talk about it, but you, um, SVC Whole Game Man took the Predator Rune again. So, yeah. after, I, I'm assuming after 6, he would start to roam more because 3 yeah. 6 Vega doesn't really have too much damage, especially in the early game. After six, yep. the low HP targets are basically executes for you. So that's another thing. Archon crashing a huge wave here. Yeah, pressuring Huff Zone indeed quite a bit. And you know, he does have a ward in the river there, so he, he will be able to uh get some vision onto the Charizard here, who is now in the mid lane, gets the fear onto Kaiser Uwu, gets a bit of a more uh slash here, but nothing's gonna come of it at this time and they're just gonna back off as well because jackal was there to support his mid laner yeah. he shows up just to make sure kaiser is not going down Kaiser is getting close to his level six this time oh, wow, yeah. I, I don't know if it's about the dark seals both games dark seal mid laners have been getting the first skills in the mid lane i guess it's just <laughs> a tight thing of commitment but dark seal <laughs> gets going for kaiser that's what you want. Um, Kassadin 
can snowball pretty fairly, although the champion really like wants to hit this level 11, level 16 power spikes. When he's yeah. ahead, it's really hard to play against him, especially as Vagar, because like your your bait your cage doesn't really stop him from going onto you. And mm -hmm. especially with a volley bear on the enemy team, you can get dove in mid lane. Like and like mid lane is probably the safest lane to be in, but even with the comp uh, even with Vegar, even with being mid lane, when you're against the Horizon's uh, mid jungle duo, you we might always have the pressure of getting dove. And we see Spravo moving mid. And I also want to point out, uh, Sultan here that uh, okay, they're just skirmishing. Uh, we can continue talking. Uh, so I wanted to point out that uh, Kaiser Wu is actually. Oh well, never mind. As um, we see Hubzone using the showstopper there to just suplex Jackal away and ensure that nothing else would come of that skirmish there. Okay, so back to what I was saying before we get interrupted again. Kaiser U is actually keeping up in CS with the Vigar there, which you typically don't see into melee uh, range matchups. So also kudos to him, and I think he's probably ahead in gold because of that kill as well. Yeah, he's three hundred gold ahead right now as well on the Vigar there. Yeah. Uh, Kaiser should be careful. Okay. He has the Rift Walker. He, he's fine. Yeah. Uh, like, Hubstone was also in the river, so... Um, yeah, like, right now, it's super hard for PGO to kind of do anything to Kaiser. Unless, like, Charizard gets level 6, and then after he's level 6, um, Warwick's ultimate, that uh, suppresses the enemy team. So, if this is the enemy champion that he uses it against, so if he's able to land it on Kaiser, he can actually burst him down pretty fast. Cassidy, not the tankiest champion. So, yeah. especially with the Vigar. Oh, being gone. <laughs> yeah, pr yeah, Primordial Burst just like, bursts you down really good. <laughs> when, when, yeah. when you're really low HP, so. We're seeing yeah, I'm, 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 that, that item removal still hurts me, I'm not gonna lie. Like, <laughs> I like to row it. No, seriously, like, you know, it was such a good item for like some of the squishier mages and whatnot, and you got, it gave you everything. It gave you health, it gave you AP, it gave you mana, like. I think it was a little too yeah. good. Maybe. <laughs> he says a little bit too good. I think that was the problem, but we see like both mid laners kind of taking the tier, so. Like, they're, they're both yeah. going for the scaling, scaling. Like, they're, like, they're, like, they're gonna get online around like 20 minutes. But when they're going to be online, these other champions will be like, oh yeah, Kassan is a, such a broken champion, guys. How, yeah. how do we play against And even the wire, we all know. How but, yeah, I was about to say Vigar too with the primordial oh. burst there. Oh my god, it's Hubzone! Oh, it looked like he was trolling at first as he flashes behind Archon to get the suplex near the turret, but Archon will trade his flashback in return to ensure that nothing else comes of it. What a play from both of these top laners here, wow. Yeah. Actually, it was really good uh, play from Hubzone because, like, he saw the minion dying and then went for the flash roll. If it wasn't an, like, if there were still minions under the turret, I'm pretty sure Archon could have maybe killed, but he was also taking the turret aggro, so he would have died if he didn't use the flash. We see Jackal coming in. Oh, I think they might. Jackal coming in as Horizon or Bravo gets oh. the Zenith Blade Solar Flare onto Admish there, but the Terrico ensuring that his team members are not vulnerable for a bit longer. Scomps is gunning down this Warwick here as he gets the fourth shot onto Charizard there, so his life will be claimed. But surprise kills Jackal in retribution as well. So one for one in the bot lane, oh. and both bot laners live as Bravo's flash goes wide and. Surprise, they're getting the stun onto the Jin as Archon and Hubzone are fighting underneath this turret here. And just lots of action coming out from the rest of the rift, but nothing come of it besides the kills we saw in the bot lane. Yeah. Actually, that's a that's a net win, I would say, in, in a... For, in a side? for Horizon, I think. Because okay. on one side, um, Skons was able to pick up the kill. He didn't burn any sums. They did eventually burn Bravo's flash later on to the fight for a little bit mm -hmm. greedy pick. But on the other side, Audrey burned flash, cleanse, um, like they burned, like they, they almost burned every single ultimate. And like Skoms didn't use anything. Skoms got the kill, and the kill went to surprise on the other side for PGO. The thing is, you don't want gold on Terek. Like gold on. Uh, let's say gold on zillion 
works. It's not the end of the world. It actually works decently yeah. well. But on Tarek, like, you don't really need the gold. You don't really. That's just embarrassing. Like, <laughs> my opinion, Tarek would be a fine champion even if oh, he didn't win an no. item. No. Yeah, I don't even need to comment on that unless more comes out of it. We saw what happened. Archon was just caught out here. But Kaiser U and Whole Green Man. Whole Green Man running for his life. We'll flash over the wall, but Kaiser does not give a damn. He looks like this. Uh, Kassin is going to get the triple kill here, and he does. Does he? Uh, yeah. He does. Impressive. Oh, no, nope, Scout's got it. Okay. Yeah. As long as Brawa doesn't get it, it's a win for Horizon. Um, it was interesting because, like, PGO went for the dragon. They picked it up, but, like, they're just giving up more and more kills to this Cassidy and Ooh. I don't know if this is good. Like, it's like, And they just got bullied off the Rift Herald here as oh? Pete Horizon Gaming said, that's not your lunch. Give me that. That's m mine now. And they are just having a goon squad here as Bravo now walks face first into an Ash, Warwick, Tarek, and a Vigar, but I think they got a bit too big for their britches. You're going to see Kaiser take the hex gate there, and he's going to get out the heck out of dodge. And now, Horizon Gaming punished for their arrogance. Yeah, that was that was this overextension coming from Horizon. That there was no need for, to go for that play. You picked up their ult for free. You picked up kills on the bot side, so you don't really need to pressure that. Like, luckily, the, the guys that died were like the support and the jungler. So, not really any shutdowns. Scomps was farming in bot side. He's currently up, like, let me check. He's up like 1.4k gold up compared to Oddmich right now. He's sitting really fine. Um, also, Kaiser being up 800 gold. Oh. Yeah, Kaiser being 800 gold, but I don't think that's gonna matter right now as Jackal and Archon just take out Huff Zone here. And um, now. Once again, Archon having himself a... Oh, he's still about 100 gold behind the set there. But actually, both the top laner and the jungler are behind in gold in according to, in opposition to their counterparts right now. So um, that kill does get them a bit more uh, closer in range as this Rift Hero will be launched here. And this first brick should be going over to the side of Horizon Gaming. So we're seeing a much better game coming out from them already as we see the curtain call coming out from the Jin there as the Root and Q from Kaiser Uwu will pick up this Ash. So we're seeing a much better proactive game coming out from Horizon, what they should have been doing in game one. So this is way better than what we had in the first game. Yeah. But I don't think we're done with the action here, Sultan. Sorry. As, uh, yeah. We saw Charizard in Surprise here posturing. Looked like they were going to fight. But I think we're good now. So I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, talk. So that way I can take a little bit of a break. Yeah. I think in game one, the Nocturne was a really big part of like Horizon not being able to pull these plays. Like Warwick is working right now. It's 3 1 and 2. Really strong. But like Nocturne, just having the pressure of the ultimate from like the half of the map away, you just can't really go for a place easily. But like now, with Warwick, like, Warwick is a much more predictable champion. His mm -hmm. ultimate is still like an engage tool, but not as big and yeah. like as crucial as a knockout. They're, they are, well, Admich, it looked like he was looking for it, but his ult's not even up right now. I mean, it's going to be up in about maybe 10 seconds here. But they're, they're, they're looking as Warwick is here. Charizard is here. Oh, Skomps, you're out of position, my friend. We'll have to Gale Force forward. Warwick, yes, <laughs> Ultimate forward, but he misses, and now we get the ultimate out from su surprise there. Invulnerability for the side of her PGO, but flashes are being blown as Kaiser Uwe is trying to claim the kill onto Admish there. He will not be able to, and now the fight is being turned on Horizon's head as they will be sent off into the sunset. Goodbye, Leona. The sun does not set on you anymore, it sets on Mount Targon instead. <laughs> yeah. Um, a little bit of lore that was, there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good reaction play coming from PGO. Oddmich's Crystal Arrow just came back when uh, Kaiser tried to ult in. And like they were able to CC him down. Unluckily, again, Shutdown went to surprise. But they were still able to pick up Scumps and Bravo. And both of those skills going towards Vegar. That was much needed kills for Whole Grey Man. He's been behind almost all game. And now he caught up. 
to Kaiser. Now he has 300 gold shot down, so he has to be careful about who, uh, about his positioning. Because if he gets picked, that's going to be um, a lot of gold funneling into Horizon this time. But this is really good play coming from PGO, picking up the, bringing back the gold lead to close to only 700 gold. Yeah, close to 700 gold indeed. This game is way closer than it was in game one, which, you know, as a caster, I'm very happy for it because, you know, game one was, it it could have been, game one could have been well done, played well as well, but it, they just didn't execute it well at all. As Kaiser Uwe getting the Rift Walker there, Everfrost onto the Charizard here. Charizard not giving a damn, ultimate forward, but now will be punished instead as the Solar Bear locks him up under the tower. The curtain call is being used to just ward off the side of PGO here, but they will not leave without retribution as well. And Dragon will be claimed by Jackal here, and we have ourselves a Hextech Soul. Oh, that wasn't. Actually, that was the Hextech, first soul, or <laughs> yeah. first Hextech Drake, sorry, claimed by Horizon Gaming, it was already Hextech Soul, I missed that uh, earlier, but they will get the third Drake of the game, ensuring that um, PGO does not have soul point here, and now Bravo just blown up by the Primordial Verse from the Vigar there, a bit too cocky, and yeah. you gotta be more aware of your positioning there, my friend. Yeah. I think they could have traded Puffstone back. Just the uh, deadly flourish missing from Scomps, so yeah, Huffstone gets to get uh, get out of the turret range and gets out safe. They're gonna pick up this mid turret too. Uh, they for the first time I think in this game, PGO is finally ahead in gold. But again, mm -hmm. like 1k gold difference between the supports are the main reason for this. The mid laners are even, junglers are even. There's a 400 gold lead for Huffstone in the top lane. But there's a 1k, almost 1.3k gold lead between Scomps and Oddmitch right now. So, and this, then Kaiser just hit level 11, another power spike for him. So, I think this gold lead might be like a deceptive one. Yeah, deceptive. Okay. Like the oh, oh Archon. Oh, oh ours Oddmitch does land the air onto the Archon here. The Showstopper comes out, and then oh my goodness, it was just a. It was a, it was a gang beatdown from the side of PGO as they just destroyed the Aatrox there. Kaiser Uwu tried to kill the Vigar, but instead he was tricked and his life will be claimed by Set here instead, who teleported in to help out his mid laner there. And now that gold lead is still only about 1k. Yeah. Um. Good plays, good plays from PGO. Like. I think, especially Huffzone, realizing that uh, whole Grand Man was in a bit of a bad situation, burning his TP, but picking up the kill on Kaiser, uh, making sure his, uh, this Kaiser is not getting out of hand. He is now uh, like standing 6.4k gold, 800 gold above Archon, and they have been like doing a really good job of like picking Archon off. I think both games he has been like overextending a lot. Against this Ash, mm -hmm. against this like the jungle picks that can get to him pretty fair, pretty fairly easy. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's a really bad showing for Archon until now in the in these two games. But this game, they have they have been cons. Like this Castle Noldo died twice now. He's still sitting four kills strong. He's still decently strong. It's almost seven k gold, two hundred gold mm -hmm. behind Vegar, but. Um, he can pick it up. It's like one turret. You pick it up. It's gone. One more kill. The gold lead is gone. I want to see what they're going to be able to do with Scomps' gold lead. Because although in the bot side... Ooh, Kaiser Uwu landing the Everfrost. Whole grains, man. The Everfrost also goes... No, it doesn't go wide. as He used it to root the Jackal there, but it doesn't matter as he will not get out. And the shutdown will be given over to the Cassidy, who, uh was given a 400 gold bounty with that shutdown kill, so he is just getting stronger and stronger, but his dark stack, dark he only has two stacks on it now, though, as he did go down earlier, and his tier is maxed out. Yeah, and they were able to pick up the bot mid lane tier 2 turret, which, in my opinion, is the most important turret in this game, other than Nexus turrets, because taking that turret... Oh, 
As we see, uh, we see another gangbang, gang fight in the top lane here. <laughs> As Archon just goes down once again. Oh my goodness. Uh, PGO are definitely a mob, hit mob, just not caring how many people it takes to put down this Aatrox here. Yeah. And now they look to claim this tier 2 turret. But Horizon Gaming are making a play on the tier 1 turret of mid lane here. Kaiser, ooh, you're going to have to be very careful. Yep. I think he's out. He's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah he's fine. I'm not sure if they can keep pushing this. Archon reset. Archon is back up. This would be pretty risky for them. It's really deep for them to go for. But... Um, in general, they were able to pick up two turrets from top, two turrets from mid, thinking that the tier 1 and the tier 2 in both top and mid lane. But I think they're going to give up the dragon, which will give the second dragon to Horizon. Uh, the gold lead is not that high, although they were able to pick... Oh my goodness, Charizard gets the ultimate onto Kaiser Ubu, who does rift walk forward. He's trying to get out. He will be able to um, as the ultimate from Terra comes out here. And now the side of PGO are just warding off this uh, Horizon Gaming here as we did. Someone burned Flash. Scomps burned his Flash, correct, yeah. to ensure that he did not get locked up in the event Horizon there from the Vigar. Yep. And Drake was claimed over by Apple instead. And now we still have ourselves about a 1k gold lead in favor of PGO here. So the game is still very much, I want to say it's pretty balanced right now in terms of, uh, in terms of tempo. Yeah. Or what would you say, Sultan? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty balanced. Um, I think like Scomps and Bravo, they were both like forced to burn the flash there. It was a good try mm -hmm. from the side of PGO. And now Scomps not having his flash against this high CC team from PGO and like playing a champion like Jin, but like your mobility is solely like relying on and your he's super low on mana, so he he won't even like have much abilities to spam, you know? Yeah. Look at that. If, he if he picks up this river fruit, maybe. Um they should probably give it to him, but I don't know if he's going to be able to. They're setting up the Baron. PGO is not oh, too far oh, away. Oh, this is they have double this TP. Is, okay, he picked it up. Okay, he picked up the three. Yeah. They have double They're TP. They're going to be sussed out, though, from the Ash Arrow here. Oh, double this... TP, correct, from Huff Zone and Whole Grain Man. So let's just see. Oh, it is being used. Oh, my goodness. Huff Zone is on the flank at the red buff here. His arrow comes out. It does land onto the Volley Bear. Charizard is looking. Whole Grain Man is looking. And the Showstopper comes out from the Huff Zone as we get ourselves a Fiesta in the jungle here. A Archon is in the middle of the entire PGO squad, just using these cues to tear through the entire squad of PGO. And now they're gonna run down the Vigar here. They're gonna run down Surprise, Bravo, and Jackal are still alive. Archon is just using these cues to ensure that Pub Zone and the rest of PGO cannot do any damage. The CC from this Aatrox is just dominating and domineering. He is getting himself on a killing spree here. And Hubzone running for his life as he will be the only survivor left as they forced themselves into that choke point and just got dominated by this Volibear Aatrox combo here. And now Archon will clear out the mid lane. Jackal just getting some of his jungle camps here. And Drake will be up in another two and a half minutes as both sides will reconvene for perhaps another Baron dance. Yeah, and like, if you're seeing the replay, like, it would be... now, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like, we saw in the replay, it was just like a, such a fiesta. Both top laners being just like using their sustain to just take over this team fight. It looked like, it looked really doomed in the beginning for Horizon. Yeah. Four people yeah. being caught up in the event Horizon from coming from the Wegar, and then like Puffstone being able to ult into the, f we the uh, four. It was like, I was like, oh, okay, this is GG here. But somehow, Horizon was able to turn the fight. They actually went 3 to 2? No, 4 to 3? No, 4 to 1. 4 to 3? No? I don't know. I, th I think Bravo and yeah, Arco. 4 to 2, 4 to 2, 4 to 2. 4 to 3? Well, 4 to 3, according to production. Yeah, Thanks, okay. production. <laughs> MB with the great stats. Great stats. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> it was it was it was 43, so it was it wasn't uh, worth for Horizon in the end. Oh, Charizard yoinks it. Yep. Um. Oh, that was just a really stressful team fight just to watch. It was just super. It really fun. was. It kind of shows how like these these team comps are kind of even. Like as soon as the Tarek ult runs out, the team is really squishy for PGO. It's open season on them as soon as that Tarek ult runs out. Yeah. So if they can finish out the team fight while the Terra Ultimate is on, it's going to be like a clean sweep from them in mm. the team fight. But P Horizon priorizing the Baron now, it's not it's not soul for or PGO. So I'm not sure if they want to just like give Baron just to get to soul point. Cassin is in the mid lane. They don't do this fast. They don't do it fast indeed, because it is a Jin and an Aatrox that are your main oh. damage deals, and a Cassidy that are your main damage deals. But now, whole Gray Man caught out here as the Solar Flare will root him infinitely into place. As we see, Charizard using the infinite duress there onto the Cassidy. The Cosmic Radiance coming out from Surprise here to ensure his team stays a bit alive a bit longer. But it's not gonna matter as Hub Zone uses the Showstopper there to his own demise. And now you have a Cassidy that is running down Odd Mitch, who is stunned up and rooted by Skomps there. And Charizard and Surprise are the only members remaining on the side of PGO here. And ladies and gentlemen. And surprise here, catching out Archon, who was a little bit out of position. We see the TB from Whole Grey Man coming out here, but the Event Horizon does go wide. But they do ignite the Aatrox here, and his life will be claimed. But I think Horizon Gaming will get this Baron, get out of dodge. But the third Drake will go over to PGO as well for their loss of this Baron. And uh, Sultan, I think we might be getting a replay here pretty soon, so get ready for that. <laughs> yeah. I think that was really unnecessary from Archon to go for that. It was just, like, you have the shutdown. You need to be careful about who you give the shutdown towards. And, like, you, like four man, your team is on Baron. The enemy team has the Warwick and the Terra Cup. Like, you're strong, yes. But you you burned your ultimate. You you burned the World Ender. So you're not going to be as sustainy as, as, like, as you are normally. So it's, like, just uh, almost like an int play. And just mm -hmm. gives the shutdown and basically the dragon to the side of PGO. And like that that shutdown went to Weigar. It's like it's not the support, it's not the jungler, it's the it's the carry yeah. that PGO is trying to like funnel gold into. So 245 uh, stacks by the way. Yeah, he, he is he is getting strong. He's like slowly getting there. 700 AP. He he's only two items in. Like it's two hundred two items in. 700 AP on Vagar, almost three and a half items in on Cassidy, 350. So like that's what is what is, what, what is what is Cassidy building next, by the way? Because he has the glacial buckler there. Would that be the frozen heart, maybe? Yeah, the frozen heart works well. Okay. He has the seraph, so he gets mm -hmm. the he gets the value out of that. In general, it's a really strong item right now. Oh, hold that thought though, Sultan. I'm gonna have to cut you off as Jackal will have to use the ultimate there to get out of the event horizon. As they want to catch out this Aatrox here, as they realize his CC and life steal is just too much for them to handle in a team fight. The Cosmic Radiance is now down as Archon oh. is in the middle of the entire squad here. But Whole Grand Man just blows up the Aatrox. Bravo will give his life over as well. And now Jin and Vibe are gonna have to run for the hills as we, Horizon Gaming played that fight not to the best of their ability and was just quite uncoordinated and messy. They didn't allow this Aatrox to maximize his um his AoE to his full potential. And now PGO are looking to claim this inhibitor turret here, possibly the inhibitor as well. I think. I think that like that fight was like I think Hofstone just won the team fight for his team. His ultimate into four people. If you're gonna see it in replay, the fight starts mm -hmm. out well, the good Terrick ultimate coming in, but like the set ultimate yeah, coming in onto four people, and then him using the face breaker to stun four people and then using the haymaker to kill all of them. Yeah, we're gonna oh, see yeah, the there it is. Now. Yep, we're gonna see oh, the full right now. Like, the fight starts in. Charizard is overextended in four people. He dies really fast. But, like, the ultimate just comes in from off zone. 
it's just like it just seals the deal it's like you just can't fight yeah. into it when you already burned most of your crucial cooldowns yeah definitely like and th there it is like there's the showstopper face breaker haymaker oh my goodness <laughs> it just blows up the entire side of horizon gaming so yeah hub zone um super top zone definitely playing that set piloting it very well indeed five two and eight only 188 cs on it no gold bounty actually the gold bounty is on whole grain man right now currently but sultan here um wait horizon gaming are still a thousand actually horizon gaming are now a thousand gold ahead of pgo here even though that fight in the temple now feels like it's in pgo's favor so what do we what's the what's the map state right now like for uh, both of our teams who, who we say is has has a um, tempo i think it's pgo they're sitting on the soul point like if they pick up the xx so it's going to be really hard for the side of Horizon to play the game at all um mm -hmm. especially like this vegar just keeps scaling finish the third item finish zonia's which like they already have the um, Cosmic Radiance coming from the Terek, which will stall out a lot of time. Like, with the zone, yeah. it's going to be really hard to kill this Vagar alone. Um, Bravo needs to be careful here. See the curtain call coming up. Oh, Bravo doesn't care. Solar Fair lands onto the back line of Oh, Green Man Surprise and the rest of PGO. And now the Aatrox is in here with his AoE and lifesteal. He gets the Q3 onto Surprise there. Surprise! Our Charizard will take out the Volibear though, as Kaiser Uwu now gets caught out. Infinite Duress locks him down, and the Cassidant is just taken out and blown up by the side of PGO. Archon, Jackal, and Leona are left. They are still looking. Can they get, can they stall out the side of PGO here and ensure that they don't get this bear, uh, Dragon Soul? Charizard is 1v1ing the Aatrox here. The lifesteal of a Warwick versus the lifesteal of an Aatrox. Who is going to win? And I think we know the answer is Charizard just claims the kill onto Archon here. He's now on a killing spree. 7, 4, and 2. He's not done. He's looking for Bravo. He's probably going to he's gonna get it as well. Double kill going over to the jungler of PGO. As we see Huffzone and Whole Green Man securing the Infernals. Not Infernal Soul. Hextech Soul for PGO as well. And now they have their prize they're clearing out these min uh jungle camps and backing off and now Baron looks to be next on the menu yeah i think this game is kind of getting out of hand hextech soul is probably one of the strongest souls in the game especially when you're ahead it's like it just makes it so hard for the enemy team to kite this warwick is super strong right now like when he gets to stack the sunfire in the team fight like, like did no one can basically fight him it's like he just does way too much burn damage. He has the heal cut. He has healing in his own kit, so it's almost really hard, almost impossible for Horizon. And to we see no, we see no heal cut either from Horizon Gaming right now as well. So they're they're not tearing through this Warwick through, um, through the set or even yeah. through the um Terra kills at all right now. So they have, um, oh, they have the thorn Bobby mail has a thorn mail. Yeah. and Leona, but uh, it's like. It, like, they, they will do the heal cut, but I think the healing is at a point where, I don't know, it's not gonna matter. Because yeah. they still have the Terror heals, they still have the Gore Drinker from set, and like, even if they're not healing, they're still super tanky. And, like, yeah. the, and I... the, they don't have DPS. The side of Horizon mm -hmm. doesn't have the DPS. They have Jin, but... Oh? Yeah, it's Kaiser and Whole Grain Man fighting. Oh, and he just blows up Kaiser Uwu. So he is no longer on the rift here as the Vigar gets the ultimate there. Ottomich using the stun onto the Jin here who will cleanse it away. Bravo is getting pulled by the set here who ultimates the Leona into the back line. But Archon and the rest of Horizon Gaming are going down. The game is sunsetting onto them and I think Predictive Gaming Odin will be taking game two here. The 2-0 will be going over to PGO here and they will secure themselves the higher seed for the playoffs here. GG PGO. Yeah, GG's, they, they really played better. They, they they just played better. They team fought better. And uh, I, I think game two looked much better for Horizon. At least they had mm -hmm. some things going for them. Um,
especially the Cassidy, I think, worked in the early game somehow really well, <laughs> especially in the early game. Uh, the Jin was super strong, but they eventually fumbled some fights where they were not able to finish out the kills, and it eventually ended up as them losing team fights. And especially the later, like the last two, three fights, they lost yeah. one, they get like, uh, they gave the soul point. They lost one, yeah. they gave the soul, and then that soul translated into Baron, and then after the Baron and Hectic soul is taken, it's really hard to just defend the game because you, you're not going to start win the team fights. This set, I think Huffstone on set played really good, like especially in the team fights. The one that probably kind of feel not not field mm. my english is just getting the better side of it but um it's Bell? a sealed the deal sealed the deal oh sealed okay. the deal I, I got it sealed the deal um um like his his face breakers his show mm. uh, his show stoppers were really on point in these team fights and i think another praise should go to whole green man i think both games especially on the galio he just won me nine like galio game Surprising him, he they just took over the game. Yeah. There wasn't really anything for like Horizon to do. And game two, he was playing Vegar. He did go behind, but then he just kept like doing what he needed to do. Just put these event horizons down. Just make sure Horizon is not getting the team fights as they mm -hmm. want. And eventually, he got to a point where he was just one shot in Kaiser. Yeah, whole grain man and the side of PGO playing their team compositions very well indeed. And um playing it also from um a, a goal deficit. You know, at the time it looked like Horizon Gaming were definitely they had the game in their I don't want to say in their grasp, but they had a very strong advantage and they had the tempo and everything. And it looked like after a certain point, especially in that um was it the dragon the dragon fight or the baron fight? Yeah, yeah. Where, uh, no, the jungle fight. It was the jungle fight by the Baron, where Archon just used this AoE and decimated PGO, and it was like, okay, this is getting a little bit out of hand here. If they keep doing that a few more times, they're probably going to win. Um, but we saw that they didn't get the chance to do that. Um, they also made sure they marked the Aatrox and the Kassadin pretty well, I would say. I think Kaiser could have looked for a bit more flank angles on the Kassadin to ensure that he, you know, put the fear of God into the back line of the Vigar and the Ash there, but I don't think he was able to really do so well. So I feel like that also was a bit of a detriment for the side of Horizon Gaming here. Yeah, uh, you you really just expanded as good as anyone could have. Um, <laughs> it is the GG's um, PGO does get the second seed with this win. V, mm -hmm. I think, as far as I know, Horizon with this loss goes to fourth. Uh, mm -hmm. Shadows will take third. Um, they had the head to head against Shadows. I'm not 100% sure. I think that's just something that I think Flay will eventually. Our math, our math team, yeah, our math team will figure it out yeah. for us and yeah. let us know for sure. <laughs> so, but as we know, I think Goldfish first seed locked in and PGO yeah. secures themselves the first round by it. It is good. You you're gonna have one more week to prepare. Um, they're not gonna get the choice, but like you, you're not gonna face goldfish at least. You you know that. So that that's a relief yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah. No, that's definitely the good thing indeed for them. Um, but we do have an interview with Odd Mitch that we will be setting up here shortly. So we're gonna cut to a short break as we prepare for that interview with the bot laner of Predictive Gaming Odin. We'll be right back. So stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone, as we are here with our interview with Odd Mitch, the bot laner of PGO. Um, thank you, Odd Mitch, for joining us tonight for this interview, and congratulations on, one, the 2-0 win and the second seed. So, like, how do you feel claiming that second seed uh, here in the, in the, uh, heading as you head into playoffs? I'm um, kind of shocked, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. Basically, after we lost to Grinchy Goons, I lost all faith and hope in humanity. So <laughs> the fact that we somehow secured second seed is kind of wild to me. Uh huh. And um, you you know, before we got on air, you you mentioned something about this series to me. Uh, I was just wondering if you could you know let our viewers know once again <laughs> what you said. You know. Well, ask ask the question you asked me, and then I'll give my response. Oh, uh, okay, all right. Um, well, so how do you how do you feel about the series then? Well, I felt like it was easier than I expected. We are yeah. not known for clean two O's at all. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. The, Sultan, the, any questions? Go ahead. Um. So I think, especially you, uh, like coming into split. I think at first you went support. Um. Then you roll salt back. Um. A little bit on that. Uh, how do you think like your roster like feels best like which role when you're playing like when when you're playing AD or support? So because I, I started off the that. season as AD and then oh, yeah. in week three I think we swapped back and I went support. Um, I think we're just overall better when I play AD. Like we're four zero when I'm AD. One and whatever when i'm not ad so maybe i'm just a scrub support washed up <laughs> um i think it's less to do about like the actual role swap as far as why we've been more successful lately and just more about our roster actually gelling and figuring out how to play with one another hmm. and like going into playoffs like you're obviously the second seed but there's there's been like really awkward games i think especially in this division like Horizon obviously losing to you, but not only to you, but losing to like um, Sensei Squad, and then you losing to Green Chi. There's been a lot of like upsets happening. So like going into playoffs, what teams are you like kind of looking, like uh, looking looking at the teams and seeing them as okay, these guys are like big threats for us in the playoffs. Um, I mean, outside of Goldfish, I'm pretty confident that we can beat any team um not saying we can't beat golf this year either but the pgo way is that we're confident we can beat any team and we also have shown that we can lose to any team so <laughs> it's more about if we can find consistency in our play and have a like an even mental going into games the pgo way do you guys have like a mantra or a team chat or anything you uh you say before you get into the game uh well it's mostly just zone yelling like <laughs> it's a rad angle while we're still in draft before we're even down it's mostly just an echo chamber of zone and us telling them to shut the hell up yeah i see him in chat right now saying i say super you say top <laughs> <laughs> i will say his set ults he did drop a couple tanky members on top of my head as ash i didn't appreciate that <laughs> Yeah, definitely indeed. Oh, so you know what? Speaking of about the Ash um pick, I um I you guys are I think the first team I've seen in the CCS who've picked the Ash and won on her uh twice now. So kudos to you for one, because she has not been a you know a pick that I've seen a lot of teams win on recently. So um but in addition to that, I we need to talk about the Zillion Galio. We need to talk about Game One Draft essentially because I know y'all's comms were like, I know y'all were having fun. Can, can, can we just what were comms like in Game One? Let me just ask you that question. Uh, well, felt after the draft, we're like, what the hell are they doing? Um, mm-hmm. like we drafted Heavy CC with Global Engage as well as Disengage into. A- basically a team that wanted to run head first like running head first into a zillion ash galio just never feels good um, yeah comms are fun i mean it's fun when you're smashing of course and 
Yeah, like I'm sure Akon. whole grain man and surprise, like whole grain and surprise were just literally running um, you know, like courier runs across the map here with the predator Galio and then the zillion speed buff. <laughs> yeah, and they're pretty predictable with how they draft. Um Pecrum got hit, so Volibear is his next one up. It's either Zaya or Zeri, like most of their matches. And then we knew he was going to pick Ari. Like, we just knew he was going to do that because his Ari's kind of cracked. And Galio hard counters um, the Ari. So, wow. I don't know. It felt, felt pretty predictable. And they knew what was going to happen already. Big brain planes come, big brain play, plays coming out here from PGO. Man, I like the confidence. I, you know, it's really good. Sultan, yeah. any. Uh... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Arise. It felt like they were not playing to the level that they're capable of playing and it mm-hmm. felt like they're kind of tilted after they fell down in game one yeah and i i would say a lot of people will will probably also kind of agree with this is that do you think horizon gaming have gotten weaker i mean the elephant in the room like once gregorio left the team do you feel like that really changed um their strength or do you think um that that wasn't as big of a factor. I don't know if that's the main factor. If, mm. Like, I can just, when we're playing against them, it feels like they are thinking too much and hesitating. Okay. Instead of just, like, being fluid. Um, I don't, I don't know if they have, like, a necessary, like, a game plan going into games or, like, a way they necessarily want to play the game out. Because mm-hmm. I've seen their bot lane, like, when given resources, they crush, but it felt in this series, like, I know Game 2 in particular, they started looking to Camp Top, but I don't know if that's necessarily the best style for them. Um, I think they're still a good team, though, and can turn it around. I know, like, Scomps in particular is hella good, so if he's given the keys, I know he can drive the car really well. Okay. All right. Uh, Sultan, any other questions from you? I don't want to take up all the airtime. <laughs> no, not really questions, but props. Good job on the strong finish to the season. That looked a little, uh, let's say, scuffed after the Green Tree loss. But good job on the second seed. Oh, well, it's it's always scuffed. We'll continue to be scuffed during the playoffs. It's just a PGO way. I have one more question for you uh, before we let you go here for the night then. Uh, And that is, you know, as we're heading into playoffs, I know you all did say, or you specifically, and I'm sure your team shares this sentiment that, you know, you can beat any team or obviously you can lose to any team, but is there a certain team you really would like to play in the playoffs, Um, especially in that first round? And as you know, if you obviously beat them and move forward, then, whoever's next. So is there a team you really like? Oh, yeah, we match up really well against them, or I know we'll stomp them, so I would really like to play th- this team. And if you need me, I can list off the uh, remaining teams here in case you're wondering who's qualified for playoffs. Um, not in particular. I really want to play Goldfish again. That's the okay. main goal is to get Goldfish. <laughs> after. Okay. As far as who we play round one, it's like I think all the teams in that little soup in the middle i think all their power levels are pretty close to one another um so i'm not like it is what it is with whoever we play outside of goldfish and shadow z's gotten a lot better since we played them i think we played them week two so that's probably another team to look out for but yeah of everyone else is just bring it we don't really care who we face it's all the same to us okay well, very confident words here from Odd Mitch, who says, you know, come fight me, bro. <laughs> All righty, though. Sultan, any last questions from you, though, before we let him go, uh, you know, VOD review and celebrate with his team and everything like that? Nope. As I said, good job. I think let's just take this opportunity to say good job to everyone who was able to clinch the playoffs. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think... The stream one is still playing, so that's gonna decide the last team to clinch the playoffs. So head over to there. Make sure yeah. who make sure who clinches like the last playoffs. I'd like to shout out Grinchy Goons for at least playing a game instead of forfeiting. 
like Zeolite and Crosspoint <laughs> once they're eliminated. I know you guys got smack, but respect. <laughs> oh man, what would it be a league without some BM? You know what? I'm here for it because I'm I, I'm tired that's of not you even always. BM. I'm that's saying cool. like that's oh. I'm good on Grinchy for finishing out the season. Like, good, oh, good, no, good, I, good. I I agree with you, but you know some people may take it as BM because oh like, no, oh, if man. I was if I was one and eight on a team, I wouldn't be fucking playing. No way. He's <laughs> sin too. So good on them. Respect. <laughs> Yeah, definitely respect indeed. And Adamich, thank you as well for joining us tonight on this um, interview. And once again, congrats to you. Congrats for the congrats for clinching, uh, you know, seating and for playoffs. And good luck in the playoffs. I can't wait to cast it because now instead of Bo three, Bo Bo three, Bo three, we're getting Bo fives, and that's going to be a lot more hectic, stressful, and exciting. You know, we'll probably see some. Um, um, I don't want to say cheese picks, but we'll probably see some interesting compositions. Would you say? Uh, definitely, for sure. I mean, you can only go so deep in the bag, and eventually <laughs> you got to pull out the stops. All righty, all righty. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and wind down for the night. And as I believe uh, Sultan did say here, CCS One is still online between Team Death Realm and Iconic Severance here, so. Go ahead and head over to that channel to see who's going to win that match there. But thank you all for joining us tonight, and we'll see you soon. Cool.